Hi everybody, I'm Scott Hards, back again for Hobby You Are, episode number eight, and I'm here with my dear friend, Ryan Keene. Yeah, and we are sitting here surrounded by model boxes, trying to figure out how we would possibly get the time to build all this cool stuff. Exactly, that's always the modeler's problem. What are you gonna build it? Yeah, um, the last that. few last few episodes of this, we haven't had any problem getting uh, a lot of cool product to talk about. So why don't right. we just dive right in? Because sure. there's a lot to talk about here today. We got lots of goodies today. Why don't you get us uh, get us rolling here? I'm supposed to be the airplane guy, but we're, I'm gonna let you do some airplanes. Because we got a lot of aircraft today, yeah. so um, I'm mainly a tank guy, but. A little bit about the wingy thingies. So what oh, we I got, got the military thing over here. So. You do. Oh, see, so we're you know mixing it up, yeah. keeping it real. Okay. Uh, so what we have here are from our good buddies at Freedom Model Kits, a company out of Taiwan. And uh, strangely enough, or not, uh, this is a it's not a three pack, but it's three different releases of a Taiwanese trainer aircraft, the AIDC AT3, otherwise known as the Tsuchung. Correct my pronunciation if it's not right. Tzu Chung, Tzu Chung, I think it's Chung in actual Chinese. Um, and it's got, well, we'll show you the parts later, but it's we got three different versions of it. This is uh, and the two aerobatic team versions. Right. The what? The what tigers? Oh, these are the thunder, thunder tigers. tigers. Thunder, thunder tigers. tigers. This is their, like their standard livery. Right. You can see them doing like a fleur de lis. I guess that's what that's called. Yeah. So we, this is a this version is a is a two seater. It says it's two seater. So yeah, we got two seater. Uh, two seater. These are one forty eight by the way. One forty eight scale. Okay. Yeah. And this is a spe specific Thunder Tiger livery. Right, right. This one is for the 80th anniversary of... Uh, Something. It's not really specific. Of the 814th Air Combat Squadron. It was, it's been around for 80 years. Is Could be. Years yet? No? Yes, yes, we have. We have? Well, it was, okay. it was, yeah, Wright yeah. Brothers were over 100 years Fighting? ago. Fighting? So. Oh, okay. <sighs> wow, time flies. <laughs> time just flies. Uh, so it's a special livery for the 80th anniversary thingy. Um, all completely all new toolings, and these are your your flight demonstration teamy type things. But this is the if you like blowing stuff up, they actually have an attack version, the right. XA3 now, version of this. Is I'm not gonna mean. fake it and pretend I understand anything about this aircraft. Is this completely Taiwanese, domestically produced? I believe so. I believe so. Yeah, and if, if I'm reading here closely, it's the AIDC Le Ming single seat ground attack aircraft. So this is the Zhong, and this is the Le Ming. Okay. Uh, and it's got piles of missiles and all kinds of stuff on there. It looks like let's, a Southeast uh, Asian camo type of thing on there. Let's take a look, shall we? And you get posters. I forgot. There's posters, actually, in both or all three of these kits. Mm. And sort of a... This is kind of an interesting bluish what gray. What do we got here? Yeah, it's kind of a bluish gray plastic that we're looking at yeah, here. Yeah, we got... Here's a big pile of missiles. Oops, that was like a big... Is that like an exoset or something? Yeah. Anti-ship missile, I guess. So, Wow. Wow, it's got very nice engraved detail. Yeah. On the surfaces. The cursory in the box inspection does not suggest there's any reason why you wouldn't want to try to build this kit. It is cool. Yeah. You know, if you're Taiwanese building, attack aircraft, yes. what are you saying? And if your collection is always is full of F-16s and F-15s and F-18s and Harriers, God, I love the Harriers. But uh, if you want something a little different, that's not going to be on every shelf you see. Freedom models kit. There you go. The XA3 or the AT3s. So that's cool. From our buddies at Freedom Models, Taiwanese company. All right. Okay. Moving so right along. Is, we, have a, we have a cute little uh, oh. special release from our friends at Hasegawa. And basically the box art here tells you all you need to know. <laughs> Bands uh, and yep. um, attractive young ladies. Yes. Uh, what we have here is a reissue of the Volkswagen Type 2 minivan. Hmm. Um, or whatever it was called uh, in, in your country. Hmm. Uh, I've always just called them a Type 2. Um, Volkswagen bus, the, I grew the up micro bus, bus micro or bus, whatever, yeah. 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 Um, of course, one of the uh, the iconic Volkswagens, uh, the Type 2. Mm. Uh, but this is a limited release uh, with uh, Hasegawa. You can tell because it says right on there, limited edition. Limited. But uh, uh, for a little industry speak here, it's an SP, which is Excellent. special. Yeah, and it's a, it's a one-time generally release. Right. So what we've got here is their Type 2 uh, that they've repackaged. Or I shall I say also reshot in black plastic, black plastic. to uh, super cool flames. Uh, yeah, to match down. the box top. And we have, uh, as Brian has already pointed out, a one twenty fourth uh, scale. Uh, is this resin no, that's or resin. some kind of a, a softish uh, plastic uh, of a very attractive young lady? And you know we're always talking about all of the the beautiful detail on the parts. And I, I got to tell you, uh, this young lady's figure 
part also counts in terms of the uh, beautiful detail. Well, because Hasagawa doesn't this is an excellent sculpt of a human being. Yes, yes. That, is, that is very awesome. So yeah, and it is uh, resin confirmed on the box. Okay, a resin figure. So yeah, the, the kit itself is a very straightforward, no interior detail, no engine. This is just a you know curbside kit curbside. of the type two. Uh, so you can actually uh, spend most of your time on this young lady if you want, uh, and, or the cool Keep flame right. decals which it also comes with. Wow. So. Nice. So yeah, this is just, I thought, uh, you know, uh, Hasegawa does a lot of these special releases with some kind of uh, unique decal marking uh, scheme. They do it in aircraft a lot too. Right. Uh, but I just thought this was an interesting combination uh, to put uh, this beautiful young woman next to a Type 2. Uh, and uh, of course you can do anything you want with the parts. Uh, no, is the, kid, is the Type 2 this short or is she like a 7 footer? Uh, I would like to hope that they haven't screwed up the scale that much, but... Uh, yeah, but I don't think I've been around one of these since I was a kid. I remember them being a little taller than this, but, but maybe, yeah, it's, I'm, maybe it's right. I don't know. Yeah, I'm kind of thinking, well, she is in heels. <laughs> she is. Oh, there's, a, there's actually the kit and her together. Though, okay, so. yeah, on the side panel there, yeah, it's like her. the top of her head is a little bit shorter than the vehicle. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, this is, uh, this is for, you know, impact, I guess. Yes, a large, a large... Wonderfully large. But yeah, but get them while you can because this is not going to be a standard release. Limited. Uh, this is a limited edition. Limited edition. Uh, I can tell you that as of uh, this recording, Hobby Link Japan has plenty of inventory for now. Uh, and of course, fine Hasegawa dealers worldwide hopefully have their inventory as well. But again, limited release. I thought it was kind of neat, so I decided to bring it on today's show. Sweet. Nice to mix it up. Alrighty. What's next? All right. Well, uh, we've got a lot of aircraft, but I'll do a little military thing. Uh, this is from our another Taiwanese company, by the way. Oh, really? Yeah, Pig Molly. Pig is, is Pig from, Taiwan. from Taiwan. Oh, I don't know yeah. that. Uh, you might recall some of the previous shows we showed, I think, at least one of the big shows, the Tiger 2, the big honking Tiger yeah, 2 yeah, show. Yeah, yeah. Uh, they also do a Tiger 1 show. And this is now their, you know, uh, we've already got a couple of the main German ones out of the way, so they're uh, going on to a Soviet or a Russian one. And this is the... 7.76.2 millimeter um, HVAPT, which we figured out is high velocity mm -hmm. armor piercing. Some high velocity armor piercing. Don't know what the T is, and that. Now this was the. So it's like a T thirty four gun. Yep, yep. Fired this these? was the okay. type of round. Yep, T thirty fours, KV ones. Wow, I mean, just guys. even from the size of the box, you can kind of get a, a feel for how much smaller yeah, of an ammunition yeah, it was. Should have brought an eighty eight. Than uh, than the eighty eight that yeah. the Germans were. So yeah, it goes together just like the other. Oops, I think it goes this way actually. And it comes with the uh, striker plate. Strike plate and a little bit of a de detail for that. Ba -ba boom So all you got to do is we'll show this in detail so later. So one, this two, three, four oh, parts. You're done. All, all you have to do is clean up a seam here and there. There's no seam on this part. Wow. Wait a minute. Yeah, it's nice and clean. Oh, oh there's there. oh, there 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 seam. Okay. There's probably a little bit. Yeah, there's a bit of a seam visible yeah. on the on the tip here. So you can just yeah, that out. yeah. And these are um, this is made out of I think this is PPP polypropylene. I believe it is. Uh, it's in the description anyway. And ABS plastic, uh, so it's easy to go together, paint it up, sand it up, and you have yourself a uh, bona fide 7.6.2 millimeter Soviet World War II. If you've shell. got the if you've got the vertical clearance on your modeling shelf, these would be you know really yeah. fun to, they, they to don't put take these the footprints not so on, yeah on display with you know like a T thirty four K V one or something right. next to it to get an idea, uh, you know of how well, big sure. the actual armor actually was or I mean the the, the weapons were. Yeah, and li and like uh, the big eighty eight shells, this also has uh, stencils for doing all the markings on there. So cool. You stencil, so you can hold thing. it up just a little bit so you get that blurry sort blurry. of lazy stenciling exactly. effect on one side of the, the, you know, of the paint job. They would have done back in the 40s yes yes so yeah this is cool great and, stuff uh, oh, interestingly it's 7600 yen i am thinking that's probably not a coincidence 76 millimeters 7600 yen well with the 88 it wasn't 8800 yen was it i think that it was, was more it was more than that because that was a yeah. lot of plastic more than that. Yeah. Is, i don't know about you guys but i'm going to build mine i'm going to make a thermos out of it because it's perfect <laughs> perfect thermos size you know, well it's going to hold a good amount of fluid but i don't know how it's going to hold the temperature for you yeah it's yeah we did have to you put a thermos inside of it and just kind of anyway <laughs> anyway i could go on but yeah from our friends at pig models 76.2 millimeter high velocity air armor piercing okay shell. all right what you got scott well, we're going to move on to uh, discussing a kit that should surprise absolutely no one, because for the last several episodes of this show, it's been on the wall behind us. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. I speak of none other than the all-new Fulker DR1 triplane yes. uh, from the good people at Mon Models. 
who I'm going to speculate were probably the guys tooling it for the late, great Wingnut Wings. Involved in some aspect, I would imagine. Yes, because, you know, as uh, Beaver Corporation, where we're shooting this, the subsidiary of Hobby League Japan, was the distributor in Japan for Wingnut Wings uh, during their great run. And uh, we had received from them, uh, before the uh, unfortunate uh, device, we had received all these, these runners from them, uh, and this great in box art, too. Yeah, beautiful, yeah. beautiful box art in uh, the spirit of all of their other uh, stuff. And then something happened, uh, which uh, I guess only a few folks in New Zealand know the, uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the, the true those. story for that. <laughs> I've heard those stories. Uh, but here we have the, uh, the Fokker DR1 from now Mung Models. Now, we could break out these runners, except there's no need to, because Basically, these back here are yeah. almost identical to what's in the box. Uh, these are very early, uh, early test, test shots, shots, so there's bound to be some Yeah, they cleaned it up and adjusted it a Probably bit. Probably nothing but, you could tell from the video. Right, but the, the, the things that we are, are seeing for the first time, of course, is the, uh, uh, the instructions and uh, that other stuff. So why don't we take a quick look at that. Hmm. We've got the uh, instruction booklet here for building the model, uh, which, unlike uh, Wingnut Wing stuff, does not contain any uh, background or history. Uh, this is purely for, uh, for assembly purposes. Uh, but we do have a few cards here, These are interesting. Uh, which are in uh, Chinese and English, uh, talking about the history of the aircraft. Uh, and, oh, there's even Russian. Wow, and Japanese. Okay. Uh, lots of different languages all covered here. And uh, I should mention that on one of the cards here, uh, there's a picture of the most famous pilot of the DR-1, uh, which is, of course, Manfred von Richthofen. Uh, and there's another version of this kit. We don't have one handy, but there's another version of this kit that comes with a bust of uh, the Red Baron himself. Yep, a uh, bust. The bust in one tenth scale. One tenth scale. So, it's uh, so yeah, uh, you're probably seeing an insert uh, shot of that bust right now. Um, so yeah, there is a, uh, a version out there uh, floating around uh, with the bust in it. So if you want to have something uh, interesting to put next to your completed uh, DR1 model, then the you've got Baron. the Red Baron himself. Right. You know, I, I'm, I'm looking at these parts here, and I said I wasn't going to break them out, but here they are. Um, you know, this is a 30-second scale kit, but to my, you know, World War II modeler eyes, this looks like a 48 scale kit. Uh, DR1 this was, was small. a small airplane, small wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, they had, uh, I don't know if they were original, but they had parts of one at the Zinsheim Museum mm -hmm. in Germany we went one time, and it's like, yeah, it's small. It's really? It's yeah. a small aircraft. So yeah, of course we were uh, just before we started recording today. We were talking about you know the uh, you know the advantages of having all these wings mm -hmm. uh, because you know back in the in World War One there were monoplanes, there were biplanes, of course, there were triplanes, and uh, we we're talking about how this is almost a quadruplane. Would that be the next level of yeah, wingage? Because the, yeah, there. there's an airfoil, definitely an airfoil down there as well. So we're thinking Point like. Five. All these wings, I'm sure maybe in the comments somebody who uh, knows a bit more about aircraft physics than we do could comment, but all these wings are going to create a lot more lift, but also a huge amount of drag. Yeah, yeah. So, okay. what, they're giving up speed for maneuverability? Speed for maneuverability, I guess, yeah, yeah. Turning, you know, out-turn uh, your enemy, get your guns on him as right. soon as possible. Uh, maybe not... Maybe because not if, you're, but if you're slow, he's going to just leave. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so... True, but uh, uh, yeah, but definitely they were going for, I think, anyway, maneuverability over raw speed. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, obviously there's a lot of history at the Fokker DR-1, thanks primarily to its super famous pilot as well, uh, or one of its super famous pilots. Uh, and this is a, a release that, you know, we had been asking Wingnut Wings, of course, to do forever when we were still uh, working with them. Uh, they had talked about how, well, we don't really need to do that because there's, there's, great, there's great Fokker kits from other companies. There's a, yeah, another yeah. 132, that's fine. We don't need um, that. But then it was a never say never to it, Yeah, and then we got us off with Camel, so and Camel then we got the really Fokker well, DR1. And so. uh, we were really looking forward to uh, working with Wingnut Wings on this. And as, as um, bittersweet as it is, yeah. it's not come from Wingnut Wings. It's still nice that their work is living on. Yep. Uh, in this Hmong release. So you know, kudos to Hmong for putting it out. It's kind of like, you know, when a, when a famous author dies and his son puts out the unfinished manuscript. Mm -hmm. <laughs> or Herbert, something. Brian Herbert. So, yeah. Um, yeah. You know, here's we're, we're thinking about you out there, Rich, uh, as we, uh, we report on the, yeah, yeah. Uh, as we report on this kit. Um, but, yeah, thanks to the efforts of a, a lot of uh, Kiwis and, of course, their friends in China, we are now yeah, uh, able to build a great new kit of the Fokker DR1. Yes, indeed, indeed. All right. So. Okay. All right. Who's next? Me? You're up next, and I have some questions about this uh, this little guy on top of that. Box. Oh yeah, we'll talk about the little guy here. The little what? Guy. Okay. 
one one forty four scale XP fifty one. All right, I'm much more interested in the branding that I'm seeing on the box here than what it is. Oh well, now that you mention it, it's got the little beaver. What the, the heck? Beaver Corporation. That's Beaver Corporation. That's us. How we come we we've have? Got, we've got some kits that we work with other uh, manufacturers. I'm actually not being completely coy here. I mean, I'm I'm not exactly familiar with uh, how this came about. Um, so Beaver Corporation branding. So obviously then what overseas everybody's gonna have to get it from like hobby link or exactly yeah but uh interestingly this is from a japanese manufacturer called fox one design they do a lot of uh 1144th resin stuff right. which we uh, we actually distribute fox one in japan so we had a good relationship with uh, the guy at fox one and he said hey if there's any interesting things you might want to do i can mm -hmm. we can whip up something nice and cheap uh, highly detailed and not too expensive so we thought oh well this is a quirky bomber from Designed in 1945, first flew in 1949, the XB-51 prototype bomber. As you can see, it's got some funky engine. It's got three engines, two. Very funky engine placement. Two kind of stuck on, here, stuck on here, and it's got one in the back there. Why not wings? Uh, Is there some way we could ask the guy back in the day why they didn't put the engines on the wings? It was, it was 1945, just trying to see what would work. You know, they didn't have computers and all that. What's the, the landing gear? How are they getting around that engine? I don't know. Oh, it's got funky B-52 style that come out. Under. Well, let's, let's have a look inside here. So, yeah, it's the XB-51 prototype. Now, did uh, they ever actually build one of these? Well, yeah, they built a couple because they were trying to sell it to the Air Force, I guess. Okay. Um, who, who's the... Is it Convair? Is it Convair? Sorry. Oh, it doesn't say... It doesn't say on the lid. I thought it was Convair. Um, you guys out there know, so let me know. Uh, reading, reading... Oh, Martin. Sorry. Sorry, Martin. It's a Martin product. Um, and it actually lost the uh, what the bidding wars, I guess, to the um, British uh, Canberra, which was built by Martin in the states of the B fifty seven, the Canberra bomber. So that's it lost out of this. A little more modern design on the Canberra, mm -hmm. but uh, yeah, there's your wheels, your your landing gear. Crazily. Yeah, they are kind of weird. Oh, so what they had wingtip wheels as well? Yeah, yeah like a B fifty two or B forty seven. You know, you got the little wheels on the out, on the outriggers there. Wow, that's your main weird. gear. But it doesn't look like it was that big. No, no, it was pretty small. It was, just, it was a single seater. But then we'll show you some close-ups of this later. Man, I can think of a lot of reasons why they didn't choose this design, but okay. <laughs> it was the 40s. Um, so you can build it gear up, gear down. Uh, it doesn't have pilot figure, but it's got the decals for multiple versions. Um, although one of this aircraft's claim to fame, but it was used in the, uh, the uh, 1956 movie um, Toward the Unknown. And it actually didn't play itself. It played the role of the Gilbert XF-120. So you need to check this movie out. <laughs> Toward the Unknown. Okay. It's like test pilot-ish type stuff. The, the word unknown is really kind of a theme right now in my head, you know, related to this actual aircraft or to that movie. So, But I'm um, looking at the markings. You don't, you, I don't think you get the markings, unfortunately, probably copyright issues or whatnot. But uh, This almost looks like it's like drone markings or something. Yeah, yeah, well, you know, during the testing, they want to yeah. see, see the, the roll yeah. and all that kind of stuff, so. All right. Uh, so did, it, so it, it flew? Did oh, it, yeah, it yeah. I don't have the info in front of me, but uh, I think there was probably more than one built, okay. uh, tested and flown and uh, lost out to the camera. But available exclusively from Hobbyland Japan and Beaver Corporation. That would be correct. Yes, yes. We are proud. Proud to you. You've got inventory? Uh, name, uh, I'm sure we're going to get oh, yeah. hundreds and hundreds we of did. orders we after promoting it. Because uh, we're also going to get this. Yeah, yeah. And it's uh, it's only 7,700 yen, so, which is not bad for a re full resin kit of this size. And um, I think the only other kits of this are there's a big 72nd one from Anagrand, I believe, mm. which is not even production anymore. But right. That'll set you back a couple of Mimon, Satmon, or something like that. 20,000, 30,000 yen. Uh, so, yeah. XB-51, a.k.a. Gilbert XF-120. Thank go. you. Yo, you over here. So you got to do airplanes this weekend. I'm going to do a military thing here. Um, one of my favorite pieces of World War II hardware, as a matter of fact. Uh -huh. None other than the German 88. It's a beast. Um, this is, of course, the, the classic 88. This one in the, uh, the the highly mobile version here with the, uh, what do you call these, these... They're almost like dollies or these these units they could quickly no, connect. The thing yeah, yeah, they, they could connect uh, for it's just a for towing purposes. But yeah, um, a famous or, or infamous, as the case may be, a Japanese hobby company, a de facto CEO actually owns, owns one, one of yeah, these yeah. here in Japan. You go see it. Uh, of all things, so there's an actual 
actual 88. Now, there's two interesting things about this. Uh, first is the scale. It's 118, 18th. which is hardly uh, your common uh, scale for World War II military uh, yeah, articles. Yeah, big stuff is 160, I think, um, is what you get for the big stuff. So. But you would be forgiven for saying, wait a minute, didn't Trumpeter release one of those a while back? Maybe. Uh, do you want to fill us in on the on the story there, Brian, with these this new brand? Oh, I way, yes. love we have, kids. I yes. love kids. We have several. I love kids here. Yeah, kids, kids here. Um, uh, yeah, well, it's part of the big trumpeter family. Um, I believe some of these were previously released several years ago by Merit International, mm -hmm. um, but they haven't been available for several years. Right, and, uh, and depending on Merit's distribution at the time, there may be right. some regions or countries where it was really exactly. hard to get this. Exactly. So. Uh, so we were approached earlier this year and said, hey, you guys want to carry I Love Kit? And since we do love kits, as you well know, uh, we said a hearty yes, let's do it. Yeah. And now, so we've got a lot of cool kits. I have a, a soft spot in my heart for kits that have a lot of just little fiddly details all over them, and this certainly counts. Um, you know, it's kind of like the opposite, you know, if we can get this. Great boxes, by the way, guys. Okay, definitely going to be protecting the plastic very effectively. There we go. Uh, All right, well, let's take a look here. Um, it's large. Yeah, these, uh, these rims over the mm -hmm. wheels give you a good idea how big this is going to be when completed. And lots of nice detail. Yeah, and, and excellent detail everywhere. Uh, this is something I would actually really love to, uh, to build because the 88 is such an iconic piece of, of hardware. Uh, that was uh, like perfect German engineering or German engineering at its best um, and being used to devastating effect in many roles throughout Absolutely. the war. Yeah, yeah. Uh, both tank mounted, ground mounted, anti-aircraft, anti-tank, you name it, mm. you could do it with an 88. Now which uh, one is this one? This is the Flak 36. I don't so anti-aircraft. If that's the one that would be in the Tiger 1. It looks a little short so maybe Tiger Yeah, one. this is the AA yeah. configuration. Yeah. So yeah, this would have been one to point Burn at the sky but there. wasn't it... Uh, um, Rommel, who just said, yeah, I just point them down at those tanks that are coming, yeah, and it, yeah. <laughs> it works pretty good. Now, another, another interesting thing about this kit is the price. It's a big 118 scale kit, and the thing's right. only 5400 yeah. Okay, that's really cheap. That's like $50 USD yeah. uh, MSRP. For, uh, for a kit of this size yeah. and with this much detail, that's uh, actually a very welcome price figure. It is quite the bargain. Welcome price figure. Yes, yes. But it's 18th scale, Brian. What would you ever put it next to on your shelf if you want all the scales to be the same? Well, you're saying cars, you know, a lot of Mopar 118th, Camaros and whatnot. Uh, although there are some aircraft. If only there were aircraft in 18th scale. scale. Yeah, look at this. I got one right here. <laughs> One, also from our buddies at I Love Kit, and this is a 118 scale Dauntless, an SVD. The Dauntless. Dauntless dive bomber from I Love Kit. Little squids on this box here. Uh, we won't be shipping this out to you, or you, or even you. This one will stay in house. Uh, but yeah, this is a monstrously large kit in 118. Do I dare even try to open it here? Let's give it a whirl. There we go. Oh, we got, woo, it's a lot. Oh, we got oh my the, goodness. The yeah. And the dive brakes, which is, a, that's like a Dauntless trademark, right? Well, yeah, yeah. It's those those dive brakes. punk. Pierce to dive brakes. Yeah. And I'm seeing very, not, Man, not that is a long airplane. Not overdone uh, engraved panel lines with uh, some rivet rivet detail in there. We got bombs. We got interior here. We got even Man, more. This is big though. More holes for dive. It's like yeah, this this built up. This is going to be really a large. Well, I'm trying to see if they take up a lot of space on your on your uh, desktop or shelf there. You got actual wing parts here. And Let me see uh, if the box tells us about sizes here. Um, cowl. It does not. Well, it's large. I can tell you with the cowl attached. We could do the math somewhere, but yeah. Yay long. With the cowl yeah. attached. I was seeing if maybe the bottom wing was one piece, but it does not appear to be. It's in multiple pieces. My dad, just look at that, look at that, turkey, that big turkey yeah. wing we got here. So I'm sure the, uh, the guys over at Large Scale Planes, that, that great... Uh, group on the internet are going to be very excited that this right. has become available again. Yeah, yeah. Because it definitely qualifies. Yeah, so this is super sweet. And like the uh, the 88 there, the price is not crazy. It's 118th, as you see. It's a mountain right. of plastic. It's only 1600 uh, or 16,000, 1400 yeah, yeah. So about $160. $160, roughly. yeah, roughly. That is super sweet. So yeah. we had... In the recent movie, we forgot to mention it. Ah, oh, yes, Midway. Yeah, Midway apparently got the, um, good reviews. Not the old 74 Charlton Heston, midway. Yeah, the one where 
the one where the playing bling types kept changing. Each Texan, I think. Well, it was either Texans or then it was a Dauntless, and then you see an F six F crashing, and it's just yeah, oh, it's all uh, over. The, yeah. It's all over the place in that movie. Yeah, yeah, right. Well, apparently, I haven't seen it yet, but uh, yeah. the new Midway's got good reviews, and it's all CG type stuff, I guess. So the accuracy is probably a little bit. The aircraft, I would like to actually hope stay consistent. Season whatever uh, the Japanese aircraft that were used. Uh, so, yeah, tie in, tie in. So, I love um, Kit. We have big, big bigger, bigger, but... And, uh, let me see if I can get up without, yeah, let me actually without some, tripping over my microphone. Yeah, actually make some room here. Uh, big, bigger, and... and you got one more? One more super, the super with it? I think I'm going to need a little help here, Brian. Okay, okay. okay. Uh, Ooh, we're going to hit the cameras. Biggest. Does this, does this even show up on the whole camera? No, I, this think, is... I think we should be in frame, mostly. Oh, Anyhow. Yeah. This is the biggest kit from I Love Kits. It's we one, have one 200 scale. Hornet. It's the Hornet. You know, when I was a, when I was a little kid, uh, I think the Hornet may have been the first ship kit I ever built in my life. It was okay. a little 700 it from, I don't even remember where it was at this point, and I'm sure I sank it with my BB gun at some point in my youthful career. Uh, but yeah, so it has that weird sort of place in my heart, uh, that weird familiarity you get with something that you built even when you didn't even know what it was at the time. <laughs> but of course, the Hornet, famous for the Doolittle Raid. Doolittle Raid. Uh, and this is the official Doolittle Raid version of this kit. Uh, besides all of the uh, Dauntlesses and uh, not Avengers, uh, Devastators. Devastators that are also included in here, <laughs> this Wild has the full squadron of Doolittle B-25s included as well mm -hmm. uh, as parts. And why don't we just uh, dig in? We're not going to be able to manhandle this on the desktop here, but we'll, we'll roll the, uh, the footage we have of us digging into the box here uh, and take a look at this. So we've got, you know, a single piece hull, which uh -huh. is, of course, why they... Well, yeah. Why the box is so big? Couldn't they make a two-piece hole and make a smaller box? And you got putty and all that kind of stuff. Okay. You might want to might want to RC it too. Yeah. Uh, okay. I, I suppose something this big, yeah, would actually be RCable. Uh, but yeah, here's here's the box with uh, all the B25s. So you can see it comes with a a full complement uh, of B25s so that you can deck this out as the uh, you know getting ready for the Tokyo raid uh, version if that's what you'd like to do, or you could set it up. Uh, as the Hornet appeared during more conventional operations. Mm, wild uh, but, uh, yeah, I, I, again, I didn't Wikipedia this before coming in, but I think wasn't the, the Hornet wasn't sank at the Battle of the Coral Sea or something like was that? Was it? I believe. Mayhaps. But yeah, she didn't survive the war, uh, uh, sadly. But, uh, but the Hornet, uh, in a beautiful, beautiful, not new, but previously hard to get kit. And now available uh, again. And now available wow, again wow. from I Love Kit. Uh, which is part, again, as Brian mentioned, of the Trumpeter family of brands. Excellent uh, stuff. And now coming to you, at least in Japan, from Beaver Corporation and Hobby Link Japan. Yep. So those of you who are looking for a few months of, or years as the case may be, of hobbying fun, uh, this is definitely a great piece of history that could yep. be well worth your time. Clear a lot of space, a lot of space. Alrighty, I think that pretty much uh, finishes up for yeah, this week. Yeah, the room was full. There's no space for little kids. Else, so yeah, we've got it covered. Here. Again, our usual uh, disclaimers about uh, staying safe during the coronavirus pandemic. Uh, we, of course, are quarantining ourselves when we're not together, uh, shooting video like this. So we know that you know we're right. both in uh, healthy conditions. So we are. We got the bubble. Yeah, we we, we have bubbles going, and uh, fortunately, nobody at Beaver or Hobby Link Japan uh, has become sick. Nope. Uh, and certainly we are doing our best to make sure it stays that way. And we really hope that you guys are too. So as always, thanks so much for uh, your hot support of our show and for all the great comments that you folks are leaving us. And we'll be back as soon as we can with the next edition of Hobbywire. Till then, see you again. See ya.